Well, not as much as we should have done. I helped organize one meeting at the faculty at our journalist factory where I had gotten to know this foreign group uh, because I had, for, for a short time, I lived in the same dormitory where they lived. Then I moved to the journalist uh, dormitory, and then I got married and moved out. But um, we organized an international evening where I still remember a Czech fellow playing the flute and two little Chinese students, uh, young women, who they finally persuaded to sing, and the Albanian group, there were eight, eight men and one woman, but the, the eight men, they, loved, they sang wherever they went. And um, uh, also the uh, others too, the, the French. Uh, it was a really wonderful international evening. But I fear this was not so often. In fact, when we tried to repeat it, we had, pro we had problems because there weren't just the two young Chinese student women, China, of Korea sent a group too, North Korea, but China sent a whole group of a hundred, and they, they were very well disciplined. Instead, like the other students in the in the breaks, they go out and smoke and chat and, and loaf around in the lawn. Or the the Chinese did gymnastics in that time, and when we invited them, to, to we wanted to invite them to the next, they said, either all of us or none of us. Now we couldn't get a hundred. And he couldn't get them into the room, so that I don't think this was common. Uh, I went to a big dance, but it was of foreign students and guests, also Germans. But I, I don't think this was too common. This was where the, the GDR was very keen on spreading the idea of internationalism in books and films, etc. But on the on the level of putting it into practice. They just didn't always find the right way to do it. It was difficult because you didn't have a bunch of communist young people coming from these countries. You had unemployed young people who wanted to, to come to Europe to make some money or to learn, maybe to learn a trade. And it was not always uh, so simple. At the same time, it's said that they were put into ghettos and treated terribly. Uh, ghettos is a, is a funny word. It is true that many of these groups, the, the large groups, the Algerians, the Mozambique, usually, and the Vietnamese lived in one building. But it was the new, usually a very new, nice new building. So you can't say ghetto. And it was simply because it was easier for them and for everybody when they all spoke the same language. Uh, whether that was wise or not is another question, but it was it was much easier to have the Vietnamese living together, cooking together, what they wanted to cook, etc. And but they always they were they were none of them poor as the Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese and Turkish workers who were brought into the West Germany, who were often uh, lived under miserable conditions. Not all of them, but many of them. This was never the case. They were always given good treatment, but they did not really understand how to bring people close together. It was not easy, and uh, uh, German people in general, but especially in East Germany, they, they were not so easy to, to mix with foreign groups. And not only that, there were also, of course, racist ideas in people's minds so shortly after Hitler they were the, the good thing is if they had them they kept them to themselves or in their own little groups uh, because it was against the law racism was against the law they could be punished so they kept it to themselves but it, they could not be eradicated even in those 40 years especially because the influences from west germany were always there and because of the difficulties i spoke of